Well, good morning again to you. Welcome to Turning Point. Glad to have you in the house of the Lord. This morning we're going to approach a passage in the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, the uh, 15th through the 21st verses. It's part of what is referred to as the farewell discourse in the Gospel of John. And there's some quibbles and some quabbles about whether that starts uh, in the beginning, the end, or the or somewhere in the middle of the Gospel of John, but generally speaking, this time where Jesus is preparing the disciples for his leaving happened between chapters 13 and 17, and so here we are right in the midst of that. And in these chapters, John focuses around the emphasis that Jesus has of several central themes. The foremost among those themes is to love one another, to uh, give one's own self for the sake of others, and the final theme is to follow the commandments. Those are the things that Jesus is dwelling on, not only with the disciples as he's talking and teaching them, but also the messages that he's giving to the people as he travels in his, in his ministry. Let's take a look at the text and see what you think. It's where Jesus promises to them the Holy Spirit. Here are his words. <clears throat> if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also live. On that day, you will, re you will realize that I am in my Father, and that you are in me, and that I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. It is the word of God for the people of God. And it's, it's a message of Jesus preparing the disciples for what's coming up. And it's a, a good message for today because it's talking about love and compassion and, and being together and living together and, and, and having God inside of us as we live in the world around us. But you see, Jesus never lets his foot off the gas, even in the times when he's preparing for the end. He's always moving forward. And he's always engaging in sharing the truth. And that truth is his life and his love. And he calls for us to stay connected with him. Because you see, Jesus is always excited and ready to go that extra mile. The question is before us always, if Jesus can go the extra mile, can we go the extra mile for him? You see, Jesus wants to be engaged deeply in life just as he was then and he is now with us. In the Gospel of John, Jesus predicts that he will leave the disciples, but that does not mean that he's telling the disciples that he's going to quit on them. He promises that God will give them another counselor, doesn't he? One that will be with you forever. And when it comes to following Jesus, there is never any reason to quit. Because there's no quitting with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All these three persons of the Holy Trinity represent to us this, this active presence in our lives. Even when we're feeling, sometimes when we're feeling stressed and, and overwhelmed, sometimes we feel ready to quit. But all three are seen most clearly in the face of Jesus. All of those things are encouraging and supporting of us. So the first thing we need to remember is that Jesus guides us in, in the truth. And this is the truth that we can grasp only when we look at the life 
the death and the resurrection of Jesus the Son. This truth is not something that you get out of a test tube. It is not some kind of a math formula that we have to figure out. We don't have to pull something out of our pockets because you see philosophers and judges do not own the truth of Jesus. Jesus has come, was present, stays in our life to be full evidence of that truth because he himself is the truth. Jesus guides us in his truth, showing us how important it is for us to love not only our friends, but also our enemies. That's a radical change from life before and life as it is and life as it always will be. Jesus encouraged us to turn the other cheek, to go that second, that extra mile. This is the truth that leads us to welcome children, to feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to be friends with outcasts, to lead lives of service and sacrifice. What Jesus did on the cross is what truth is and what truth does. And I think that bears repeating. What Jesus did on the cross is the truth of love and sacrifice. You see, Jesus died for Barabbas. Remember Barabbas, the murderer that was released from prison at the trials? Jesus died for him. Jesus died for Israel. Jesus died for you and for me. So if you're looking for truth, you don't have to look any further than Jesus. Because, as we have already said, Jesus is not only the truth, but Jesus is new life. Because I leave, because I live, Jesus said, you will also live. Jesus is speaking to his followers before his death on the cross. But he's uh, assuring them that when he is raised to a new life, they will experience new life as well. He promises to remain engaged with all who follow him. And this is when he said, On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and that you are in me and that I am in you. You see, for Jesus, new life, new life comes by us being engaged, remaining engaged with him and him with us. I had a post-pandemic thought to ponder. The opposite of burnout isn't doing nothing. It isn't even scaling back. We must be about engagement, jumping into life. And Jesus, I think, would agree with that kind of a philosophy. philosophy. New life comes from this active engagement from us as followers of Christ. What did he say? If you love me, you will obey my commands. And the command that Jesus says, whatever we do, obey. That Jesus is the answer to the question. When he said, I am the new command. And I give you love for one another. And I have loved you. And you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my, my disciples because you share this love for each other and for everyone else. So when we're talking about a life of engagement, we're talking about this engagement like the disciples, that they were showing love for one another. Nothing more, nothing less. Love for our sisters and brothers here in our faith community. Love for our neighbors. Love for people of different faiths, of different races, of different nationalities. Love for our opponents across the seas and divisions and other nations today. The command is clear. Love one another. There are no restrictions on that, no limitations on that. Sometimes we feel that this might be a tough assignment. This is a tough job. But fortunately, Jesus promises us love from him to support and encourage us. Remember when he said, Whoever has my command and obeys them, they are the ones who love me. And if they love me, they are loved by the Father, and I too will love them. And I will show myself to them 
So encouraging thoughts to you in the way that you live your life, not on Sunday, not here at church, but everywhere during the community. Jesus invites us to engage with him by keeping those commands, by loving him through our involvement with everyone that we come around. And he promises that he and God the Father will return that love to us. Our involvement with Jesus is not like a job that makes endless demands on us without recognition or affirmation. Jesus vows to us, affirms to us that he will show himself to us in this kind of love that encourages us and gives us strength to continue. He will never abandon us, abandon us, but he will offer to us the gifts of his presence, his truth, and his love. Now, Jesus uses this unexpected image to reveal his powerful love for people. When he's talking to the people in the city of Jerusalem during that last week of his life, he he gives this in his earthly ministry as a, an illustration. He says, how often have I longed to gather your children together? He's talking of Israel, right? How often have I longed to gather your children together? Like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you are not willing. Jesus describes himself as a mother hen gather, gathering the chicks in under his, her wings for protection and for love and that's the way that Jesus expects us to do things and it's a good image for us to keep in mind for today Mother's Day as we think about Jesus never quitting on the people that he loves always going above and beyond and being satisfied with not being satisfied with the bare minimum Jesus guides us in the truth gives us new life and promises his love over and over in everything that he does and he promises for us to be eternally engaged and he asks us to do the same and to go and do likewise you know many of you that know Candy and I know that Max Cato is one of our favorite authors in his book Jesus' love never gives up on us at any point he writes this Jesus could have said, I quit. I've had enough. So the question to us is, so why didn't Jesus quit? What kept him from giving up? And Max Cato shared a, a story about a firefighter who was around in the, on 9-11. The, uh, he was a firefighter. He was retired at the moment that that uh, Max wrote this book, and he'd had 26 years of, of service. But he knew that love of Jesus, and he knew that love of God because in that firefight, he lost his son. On September 11, 2001, he gave much more than his efforts in the putting out of fires and protecting people in New York City. He lost his son, Jonathan Lepley, who was a firefighter too. And his son was there when the Twin Towers fell. Now the firefighters are a loyal clan. And when one perishes in the line of duty, they do not leave until they find the body of their fallen firefighter. And here's the other part of their promise. That that firefighter who has fallen will not be touched and still, still one of them who knows him and loves him literally takes his body away. It was a 16-acre grave site. And then one Tuesday, three months after the disaster, his son was found. And it was Lee, the father, who carried his son from the wreckage of that disaster. He didn't give up. That father didn't quit. He refused to turn and leave. Why? Because his love for his son was greater than the pain of the search. Can the same be said about Christ? Why didn't he quit? Why? Because his love for his children was greater than the pain of the journey that he was on. He came to pull you out. 
the world around us collapses. That's why Jesus came. You were dead, dead to sin. And He came. He came to love you. That's why He came. You hear a lot about God these days. God the beneficiary. God the all great. God the almighty. God the most powerful. God the giver of life. God the creator of death. I mean, we, we're hearing all the time about God in so many different roles. But if we know anything about God, if you know anything about God, God is arbitrary. So people better be able to deal with that too. You know who said that? You know whose words those are? Bob Dylan. In an interview with the Rolling Stones magazine. It was Bob Dylan's testimony about God. So I found some thoughts on friendship. Kind of like what Jesus implied through his whole life and his whole ministry. And I thought you might enjoy hearing these. See if you can remember or think of who said these statements. If you live to be a hundred, I want to live one day less so that I can be with you. Winnie the Pooh. Oscar Wilde came up with these. A real friend is the person who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. Everyone hears what you say. A friend listens to what you say. And a best friend listens to what you don't say. A friend who is someone who knows the song in your heart and sing it back to you when you've forgotten the words. He has no enemies, but he was intensely disliked by his friends. So how do we take all this in? How do we take these thoughts? How do we take these commands of Jesus? Maybe it's as easy as saying, you know, Jesus never quits on us. So let's don't quit on you. Amen. All children say, Amen. Amen. Amen.